this disability that I have is technically termed ankylosing spondylitis, but it's basically a kind of autoimmune um, arthritis where your um, immune system attacks yourself. <laughs> and it's very painful when you're having an inflammatory attack and then it ends up um, freezing that joint. And what happened to me was I didn't have health coverage. And so all that time when it was really bad, I had a lot of damage done. And right now, like I can't turn my head, just about every joint in my body is frozen, my entire spine, my hips are frozen so that I can't move my legs sideways or frontways. And I have the movement of this one arm <laughs> that's still fully functional. This one is partially functional. My fingers, as you can see, are disabled there. But I retrained, this happened when I was going to college, and I just retrained myself to be able to keep typing with my fingers the way they are. And I can't go as fast, but I can still do it. Um, I can't go to an ordinary bathroom, use a toilet, or an ordinary shower or tub, or even a roll-in uh, is very, very difficult for me. So all of those things are impacted by this disease. It's, it's technically like a partial paralysis that I'm dealing with. And of course, it also affects my eyes. Um, it, I got inflammations in my eyes and those caused over time extreme, like what most people would call cataracts, but way more extreme. So long story short, I'm now at a stage where I am uh, legally blind and I can see outlines of things and see enough to sort of maneuver and make my way around, but I, I can't see detail. The disability that I have does require that I use a lot of help and a lot of very unique and individual help. Um, it's, I, I talk to other people in wheelchairs and I say, wow, what is it like for you? I, I'll be honest with you, I'm almost envious of people who say they're paraplegic, they don't have use of their legs, but their full upper body is, is really strong and mobile and they get themselves in and out of a vehicle and do all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, I wish I could do that. But then again, I have other opportunities. Like I can, with the assistance of a care provider, get on my feet and shuffle a little bit and see the world from a standing position, which is nice. Modifications. Okay, well, obviously this wheelchair is my workhorse um, in terms of being out and around and getting to meetings, getting to conferences, and speaking to people. So that's step one. But the real basic stuff at home, uh, and the wheelchair actually does help me at home too. I, I get around and, and out to the shower area. But at home, what we did, I worked at a desk for a while. When I was going to college, I would put in hours behind a desk with the wheelchair, and, and I used even some modifications to my computer at that point. But I couldn't sustain the circulation for long hours. It would be hard on skin, bones, lots of stuff. So Chris, my care provider, got a raise to my bed, and because I don't bend at the waist, I need something that will hold a computer in front of me. And he created a desk that's basically attached to the floor and swings around over top of my chest and slides out. And it's right close to me so I can operate the keyboard and see the screen. It's a laptop. And I was able to, in that position, I'm flat like in a bed. I'm, I don't even have my head on a pillow. I'm like totally flat. And yet I can work with the computer in front of me. And, and that was how I was able to work from home for 10 years and put in really long hours on the computer. Because of my configuration, I'm stiff like a board. You know, if you just imagine that I, I can't bend at the waist at all, trying to get me out of a bed. Okay, how do you do that? Because you can't just bend me and then lift me. You have to get me all the way up from backwards to standing in one fell swoop. So we've worked out this way where I swing sideways. We have a raised bed to start with, that helps with uh, nothing blocking underneath. Fortunately, my knees still bend. Then Chris put uh, layers of sandpaper, like you might have in a shower to keep from slipping, glued to the floor. 
and worked a rope system that happens opposite me. So now I'm lying on the side of the bed. I get my feet under me on the, on the cement, on the, on the sandpaper. He passes me the rope, puts one arm behind me. He doesn't even have to push much. It's more just stabilizing. And I pull myself up to a standing position. And from there, then the care provider can help me over to the chair and help me get in the chair. So that was something, both of those things um, took a lot of trial and error on the part of my care provider. And it's not something that IHSS in itself would cover. And I'm, I'm sliding sideways a bit here because I'm speaking to social workers and I want you to know that what you do and, and what IHSS does is it provides people like Chris who are loving and willing to put in all that extra work, what he did for me, so that I had a life so I could work from home. Those things, they're not paid for, but the, you paid him enough for the basic care that he didn't have to leave the home and get a job, and he could do those things for me. And so those modifications allowed me to work, to be easily transferred, and then finally, there's also uh, bathing, the really personal stuff like bathing. And I have to use bedpans. And um, we developed systems for that. Like he has a, you know how in the sink where you have a squirting hose? Mm -hmm. He put one of those in the bathroom to help clean out the bedpans because they're constant uh, chore. And in the shower, he's made a chair out of PVC. And he based it on my wheelchair, which has my configurations. I just sat in the position where I am comfortable and sit most often and he bent PVC until it made a chair in that same configuration and then he made the back removable so that a care provider could help me wash my hair 